Samsung 22, uh, was it 226BW, it's computer monitor, it's dead, it came from the same uh, supplier, same source that this 46 inch that we've already just repaired came from, so we're going to pop this one apart, and I've already taken the base off it and taken out the screw, so we're going to lift the top off here, and we'll just disconnect the switches, and we'll just take this thing apart and see what's going on with this one. More than likely bad capacitors because that seems to be what is the biggest problem with Samsung products is the capacitors just aren't very good. Gotta take off this shield. Lift off this. This is the shield for the, the high voltage. There we go. Now we can disconnect the high voltage leads to the lamps because I want to open this. Want to open up this. Um, Plug the lamp sources here, the lamp drivers. I want to remove this main board assembly here and tip it back. And we have a power supply, and I want to take the power supply out because I think that that's where my problem is going to be. So I'm just going to unplug the power supply. In fact, that before I even unplug it, I'm just going to take out the screws here. We'll remove the power supply from the set, from the shield. I bet we're going to find bulging caps on this thing. There's probably a pretty darn good chance that that's where the problem is going to be. It's going to be some bulging caps. Yeah, I think we've got some capacitor problems on here. That one there looks like it's probably bulging and I see a couple more here that are definitely, definitely these ones, these tops are, are raised on these so I'm not even going to bring out my ESR tester. We're just going to change these capacitors on this thing and uh, see if that fixes the problem. Now we're going to replace the caps on this and see if it fixes this computer display. And then I'll have a really nice 24 inch computer display. Not that I need a 24 inch. If I get, had this given to me a few months ago, I would have said, gee, thank you. I just went and bought a 27 inch, so it's kind of redundant, but we'll have it. So let me get the soldering iron warmed up and we'll start changing out bad caps. So we're just going to remove the bad capacitors from the board. I'm just going to heat them and just pry them out. I'm not even going to use solder wick or anything. Just heat up the just heat the solder up and just tilt them back and forth, and the caps come out. And then these caps in the middle of the board here as well. Just lift them up like that. one here was a 330. That was a 330. These five are 820. I'll replace uh, them with 1000 microfarad and uh, that should uh, fix this monitor. I'll just prove that they're all bad with the ESR tester here. 2.5 ohms, bad. 3.8, bad. 1.9 bad 2.7 bad well that one's right open completely no 2.1 these are all bad and this other one here is also 6.6 .6. so it's bad here's some replacement ones that I pulled out of a I think these came out of these ones are good yeah, 0 .06, 0 .06, this one here, 0 .03, this one here, 0 .03. So here's three good ones. Uh, I've got more here. Just kind of dig them up, and uh, we'll replace these caps and get this back together. So we got two of them mounted to the board now. We'll just I'll do these ones in place. Another one here. 
place one of these ones down here. So we have a 330. We put our 330 in here. That was the one on the edge of the board here. And then I got to get two more 1000s. Last of the capacitors mounted, we'll just solder them in place. So to recap, we've changed these two 1000 microfarad capacitors at 25 volts. They originally were 820 microfarads, we've replaced them with 1000s. We put in three more 1000 microfarad caps here to replace the 20 or 820 microfarad 25 volt caps and replace this 330 with another 330. So now that we've replaced the defective capacitors, we can go ahead and reassemble the monitor and test it. The shield cover, being careful not to damage the LDVS interconnect cable, which connects the TCON or the timing controller board, which is behind here with the signal board. So we're going to plug in our power connector and the AC power connector drops into a slot here. Now we've got our screws to reattach the board. Okay, once we get the screws in, we can remount the control board. And it just lines up with the edge of the display. And now we've got our, our high voltage power connectors that need to be reconnected. I'll just turn this around so you can see it. So there's two of them for each plug. A pink one and a blue one. And they just plug into the end of each of these connectors. So these are the high voltage plugs for the fluorescent backlights. Like that. So it snaps into these clips, snaps into the back of here. That keeps the high voltage, uh, high frequency components shielded so that they don't cause radio interference. We have one more connector that has to be plugged in on this side. That's just your interface for the, the buttons on the front. Again, it does have a metal braid around here. It's taped down, that's to ground it, that's just to remove any RF that might make its way into the cable to prevent interference. This braided ground acts like a choke coil to choke off any RF. So we just uh, snap the back on it. The cord from my camera is kind of hanging in the shot here. That's going to my external monitor. So the back just snaps on, these uh, monitors just snaps on like that. So there's the three screws that hold the back on, or hold the cabinet together, and then there's the, the base unit, which slides in like that and then there's these larger screws that attach the base and we have a picture it's an analog digital monitor I have to uh, I can plug a DVI source into this or a VGA source I'm going to plug a VGA source in. It's going to grab a computer and uh, grab a VGA cord 
and we'll uh, test this out. So there we have it. I've got it plugged into my laptop. And as you can see, it looks like a million bucks. Fantastic. Menus. Go through all the different menus here. Magic color. Right now I'm in 1280 by 960 is that's what I've got the computer set to because that's what this screen is. This is a 1920 by 1080. It looks great. Don't see any bad pixels or anything on it. Looks like a million bucks. And uh, I'm sure that I will find a use for this unit. There we go. Hope you enjoyed another informative video on how to fix crappy Samsung capacitors. Man, they've had a lot of problems lately. When they uh, moved their manufacturing operations out of Korea and moved them to Mexico and China, that seems to be about the time that the capacitor problems became a big problem. Uh, the units that were made in, uh, in Korea didn't have the problems that the newer products are certainly having but if you know what to look for it's always the same problem if you've got a Samsung unit that's dead there's a good chance the problems are capacitors with the exception of some of the plasma screens some of them blow uh, buffer boards and I have one here that has a bad buffer board that I'll, I'll make a video for if I ever get around to replacing the buffer board gotta find one first they're getting kinda hard to get but uh, Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this repair of this SyncMaster 226BW Samsung 24-inch monitor. Don't mind me. I'm just checking up on my channel here. See how our videos are doing today. Ah, oh, we've had a few. This, this one's been up for two hours and I've already got a few, uh, a few hits on it. So, uh... We'll catch you later.